welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at the higher topic of oxidation of foods. Go to the link in the description box to download a worksheet that goes along with this lesson. First of all we're going to have a look at the oxidation of alcohols. Alcohols can be classified as primary, secondary or tertiary depending on where the OH group, hydroxyl group, is situated within the structure. First we're going to have a look at the oxidation of alcohols. Alcohols can be classified as primary, secondary or tertiary, depending on the position of the hydroxyl group within the molecule. If the hydroxyl group is situated on the end carbon of a chain, then we would call this primary. Here is an example. This is butanol, and this is a primary alcohol. If the hydroxyl group is found somewhere further along the chain, but not at a branch point, then we'd, we would say that the alcohol is secondary. For example, here we have butantool. This is a secondary alcohol. However, if the hydroxyl group is found at a branch point, such as here, where we have 2-methylpropantool, we would say that this is tertiary. Pause the video now and classify each alcohol as primary, secondary and tertiary. Here we have the alcohol on the first carbon. This one would be primary. Here your OH group is also on the first carbon. This one would also be primary. Here the hydroxyl group is at a branch point. This would be tertiary. And here your hydroxyl group is somewhere along the chain but not at a branch point. So this would be secondary. Oxidation of carbon compounds involves an increase in the oxygen to hydrogen ratio. Whereas reduction of carbon compound involves the decrease of oxygen to hydrogen ratio. The original definitions that you know of oxygen, oxidation and reduction still stand, but when we're looking at carbon compounds, these are the definitions that are easier to work with. Primary alcohols can be oxidised to compounds called aldehydes and then to carboxylic acids. Secondary alcohols can be oxidised to compounds called ketones. We can do this using something like hot copper oxide, which will turn from black to brown, or acidified dichromate, which will turn from orange to green. Tertiary alcohols cannot be oxidised. Let's have a look at the oxidation of a primary alcohol. Here we have propanol. If we count the oxygen to hydrogen ratio, we can see that we have one oxygen to eight hydrogens. We can oxidize this in two stages. The first stage, we're going to oxidize to an aldehyde. This is where we have a carbonyl group on the end of the chain. This aldehyde is called propanol. If we count our oxygen to hydrogen ratio now, we can see that we have one oxygen to six hydrogens. So we have increased the ratio. We can oxidize this compound again to a carboxylic acid. This is where we'll now have a C double bond O OH group on the end carbon. We can now count our oxygen to hydrogen ratio where we have 2 to 6 or we can simplify it to 1 to 3. We've increased it further. We're able to do these two steps of oxidation because of where the OH group is positioned. As you can see in the first step, we're taking away these two hydrogen atoms and creating a double bond. In the second step, we're inserting an oxygen into this part here where we've got this other hydrogen atom. Keep this in mind when we have a look at the other structures. If we take a secondary alcohol, here we'll take propantool. We can only oxidize this once to a ketone. 
the oxygen to hydrogen ratio starts off as it did in propanol at 1 to 8. And when we oxidise this, we end up with a ketone, so we have propanol. We've only got one CH bond on the carbon where the OH group is attached, so we can only oxidise once. And here, we're taking off both of these hydrogen atoms and replacing it with a double bond to the oxygen. So we now have an oxygen to hydrogen ratio of 1 to 6, so we've increased the oxygen to hydrogen ratio. But we can't oxidise any further because we don't have any hydrogen atoms attached where the carbonyl group is. Now if we have a look at a tertiary alcohol, so here we have 2 methyl propantuol. There is no hydrogen attached to this carbon where we have the hydroxyl group. Therefore, we can't take off the hydrogen and one attached to be able to create a carbonyl and we can't go any further to a carboxylic acid. So there is no oxidation happens with a tertiary alcohol. Pause the video now and for question one, show the oxidation products and for question two, show the reduction products going backwards. For this first example, we have propanol. So we have two oxidation products. The first possible oxidation product is where we have created an aldehyde, so a C double bond O, and the second oxidation product is where we have created a carboxylic acid, C double bond O, OH. In the second example, we have 2,2-dimethylpropanol. So here we can oxidise this to a carboxylic acid. So we're taking that end carbon with the carbonyl group, leaving that there, and adding in an OH where we've got the hydrogen. And for our last example, where we have butantuol, we're going to turn that into a ketone. So here we're taking where the OH is and turning that into a C double bond O by taking off the hydrogen and leave everything else as it is. For the reduction products, we're going to find the oxidised part and we're going to take it back to the original alcohol. And when you're reducing, you aren't able to stop in the middle. So here we have uh, ethanoic, acid, uh, ethanoic acid, so we're going to take that back to being ethanol. In this example, we have propanol, so that will go back to being propantuol. So just remember to check that all your carbons have four bonds at the end. In this example, we have a ring structure, so this will go back to being an alcohol, and just make sure that you, as well as turning the C double bond O into an OH, put a hydrogen back in as well. Let's have a look at the carbonyl structure. So aldehydes and ketones both contain the carbonyl functional group. So the carbonyl functional group is just C double bond O. In an aldehyde, we'd have the C double bond O. This will be joined to the rest of the chain and a hydrogen. So this is at the end of the chain. So this is always on carbon one. For a ketone, it's the C double bond O and it is somewhere within the chain. So this is never on carbon one. Okay, this always has to be somewhere along the middle of the chain because you're going to have two carbons attached to it. So for naming carbonyl compounds, it's very similar to the other naming that you've looked at before. So the first step is always to count the longest chain, which contains the carbonyl group. So make sure you count the chain with the functional group. Number from the end closest to the carbonyl, even if that's from the right hand side. And if the carbonyl happens to be number one, then the name will end in AL. If the carbonyl is a number greater than one, it's going to end in ONE, own. And you're going to put the number into the name, just like you would with an alkene where you would say where the double bond is, here you would say where your carbonyl group is. And then you would name your branches at the start using di and tri if you need to and having them alphabetical. So let's look at these two examples. So here I'm going to number from the right hand side. So longest chain has four carbons in it. So this is going to be based on butan. We've got the carbonyl group on number two here. So I'm going to put in the two. And because it is in the number two, it's going to end in O-N-E. Then I'm going to go back and put in the branch. So I've got a methyl branch on number three. 
So I've got 3 methyl butan 2 ohm. Let's look at this next example. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is going to be based on pentan. And the, the carbonyl group is on number 1, so this is going to be pentanal. We don't need to put in the number 1. Now we just need to look at the branches. So we've got three branches here. They're all the same. Yeah, we need to give each of them a number. So we've got number two, number three, number three, two on the same one. We put in the tri to say that there's three of them. And then the methyl. Two, three, three, trimethyl pentanol. Drawing them out, we always start from the end of the name. So here we have hexanol. So that tells me that I have six carbons. And because it ends in AL, number one is going to have a double bond O and then the H. And then we can look at the branches. So 224 trimethyl. So on number two, we'll have a CH3. On the other side of number two, we'll have a CH3. And on number four, there'll be a CH3. And then we can just go in and fill in all the H's to make sure each carbon has four bonds. The next example, we have pentan to own. So we're gonna have five carbons in a row. We've got number two and own, so this tells me that we've got a ketone, so on number two we'll have a C double bond O. And then branch wise we have three methyl, so a CH3 on number three. Then we just go in and fill in the hydrogens, being careful not to put one where we've got the C double bond O because that already has four bonds. Pause the video now and try to name and draw these compounds. In this first example, we're gonna number from the left where we've got the C double bond O. So we've got four carbons be based on butan. Your C double bond O is on number one, so we're going to end in butanal. Then we're going to look at the branches. We've got two branches on numbers two and three, and they're the same. So two, three, dimethyl, butanal. In this next example, it doesn't matter which way you number because it's symmetrical. So the carbon which has the C double bond O is number two. But because there is no other place for this to have a ketone, you don't actually need to put the number in. This one is just propanone. Because there isn't another option for where the carbonyl group could be. If it was on either end, it would be propanol. And there isn't enough carbons to have a choice for where the C double bond O would go within the chain. In the next example, I'm going to number from the left because that's closest to the C double bond O. So we've got six. Our carbonyl group is on number three, so we're going to start with hexan. It's going to be on number three, and it's going to end in own. We'll then look at the branches. So we have three branches on numbers two, four, and five. They're all the same, so we try methyl, hexan, three, own. So for drawing these, we're going to start from the end of the name. So we've got propan and it's an al, so that means that carbon number one will have the carbonyl group. That means that will also have a hydrogen. On number two, we have a methyl group, CH3. And then we're just going to fill in the hydrogens elsewhere so that all the carbons have four bonds. In this next example, we just have butanone, no numbers. We've got four carbons, and it doesn't matter which of the two central carbons you put your acetyl bond O on, it will always be the same thing. We then just need to put in the hydrogens to make sure everything has four bonds. In our next one, we have hexan, three on. So we're gonna have six carbons. On number three, we have the double bond O. And then we've got two branches, 2,2-dimethyl. Two, so I'm just counting from the left because that is easier. And then lastly, we have methanol. So this is just one carbon. 
we've got double bond O, and then we need to have hydrogens. So there'll be two hydrogens. So a very simple compound. Aldehydes can be oxidized to carboxylic acids, whereas the ketones cannot. So you can try and tell them apart by using oxidizing agents. So there are three oxidizing agents that we use. Okay, so we have acidified dichromate. And its starting color is orange. And its end color is green if it reacts with an aldehyde. We also have tollens. And its starting color is colorless. And its end color is a silver mirror. Very distinctive. And then we also have phalanx. And its start color is blue. And its end color is orange. So it's the same as Benedict's, but it has a different name here. So you need to know these three oxidizing agents and their color changes. Whenever you give the color change, you need to give the start and the end. So what are carbonyl compounds? Um, they are the C double bond O compounds and they're very volatile. So they're often used for aroma and flavor compounds in food. Um, however, because they are in food and food is in air, they can be oxidized quite easily. And if there are other things present like oils, then that means that they can become rancid quite quickly. So to prevent this, we add antioxidants into our foods and these are more easily oxidized and they oxidize in place of the compounds that they're there to protect and they oxidize to stable compounds. Um, and this just means that your food can last a little bit longer. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you find it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. You can also follow me on X at Miss Adams Chem, Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry and TikTok Miss Adams Chem for updates on new videos, flashcards and short videos throughout the year. Bye for now.